because the road to hell is paved with good intentions. All right, guys. Uh, welcome to a, another episode of Oh Sint or Oh Shit. Um, it's a catchy title that I made, and my wife is sitting over there trying not to laugh hysterically at that, because I think this is the first time she's heard that. She's nodding her head yes. Uh, so today we're going to go over uh, honey pots, a sticky sweet situation that can turn deadly. Uh, I created that. I laughed for a couple minutes after typing that. Then I went on with my day. So. Instagram voted and liked the uh, PowerPoint style of uh, video. Uh, normally there will be a hands-on portion after a PowerPoint. However, this being more of a podcast style video um historically there will not be a hands-on portion this is just information uh so we're gonna have a brief interject introduction on honeypots uh the types uses current events uh, how to protect yourself and then just a conclusion of it all so first we have the introduction uh, defining it a honeypot is an enticing source of pleasure or reward um we're going to go into more, but that's just the definition. Keep that in mind as we go through this. Uh, why are we talking about them? Well, it's an important tool multiple adversaries uh, may use when they conduct investigations. Uh, the governments have used them, private entities use them. Uh, if you check out Axon's page recently, he has actually set one up. Um, it's more of a blue team thing uh, in terms of penetration testing. Um, going on to this next portion, well, I won't fall for one. In terms of what we're going to talk about today, we're going to be talking about the human emotion side and the digital aspect. Um, so human, human emotions are one of the biggest flaws in physical and digital security. Um, I've said this in, pri in prior videos, uh, you can have the most secure system, you can have you know, a government amount of money tucked into a system, and all I need is to have one human fail that entire system. Uh, is a honeypot really OSINT related? It is. Uh, because what you're actually getting is technically open source information um, from something that a user is connecting to freely. Uh, it's not necessarily red teaming or hacking or doing anything of that nature uh, in terms of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, it's more of, again, that, that blue team aspect. So the types. Uh, historically, uh, back in the espionage days, which is kind of a good tie-in to what's going on now, uh, it was a woman, or a man, but mainly a woman, uh, used to entice or swoon a target, usually a male, uh, and solicit information in various ways. Um, that woman was either bugged, they either brought a bug in order to place, uh, or they physically took information. Uh, women are seen as less of a threat, uh, and that's still true today. Um, so they were given a lot more leeway and a lot more ability to freely roam. Uh, now going on to the digital age, which is what we are in today, um, I broke it down into two different types. We have type A, which is a uh, weakened target, such as a server, meant to be attacked, uh, which the owner can gather that information. So again, that's that blue team aspect of uh, defending, gathering the intel, and seeing um, what the attackers are using. Um, again, Axon has a, a great post, which I'll link to it, uh, to the one that he's made, um, really showing that aspect of what you can learn from having one of these set up. Uh, type B, which is something we'll talk about as well, is that catfish scenario uh, where the adversary tries to get information or money, uh, we call that sextortion, um, from their target. And yes, sextortion is a real thing. Um, it's just extortion where the bribery or the threat is um, posting or giving out uh, illicit photos or information about somebody. If you were curious. 
so going over the uses, um, again, we've talked about some of them already, uh, but you're going to gather intel from this. That intel can be digital, physical, really anything your mind can think of. Um, maybe you're gathering, okay, what software is the um, adversary using? What programs are they using? What tools are they using? Uh, physical, you know, we have somebody now on the inside. Um, what was the process to get into that building? Um, is there any flaws or gaps that you saw? Or were you able to uh, take something away? You know, were you able to, to snag a photo of the uh, documents that were lying on the counter? Were you able to do anything of that nature? Uh, you can use it to gain trust. Um, again, in the, the olden espionage days, um, the women would try and gain trust of the male. Uh, the digital times, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in the digital times, using what people would trust as a plain old open server that they just think is a uh, easy target. Um, or you can use the already built trust, uh, such in the case of the Alpha Bay, which we will talk about towards the end. Uh, another use for this is stealing uh, PII or personal identifying information or intellectual property. Again, both of those kind of go back up to that initial use of gathering intel. Uh, again, the final thing down here is going to be extorting for money or services. Uh, that goes down to that sextortion portion from the last slide, but also keeping with the historical portion of you put a target into a compromising position and you have photo or video evidence of that. You show said photo or video evidence and now you have a uh, bargaining chip uh, or you blackmail them. Now this is not a how-to on that. This is just information. And I just got an eye roll from my wife over there. It's kind of fun commenting. You guys get a little commentary as I make this now. Uh, so current events. Um... There's a recent social media post going around where Russian soldiers are actually on dating apps, mainly Tinder. Um, I wasn't able to find any actual sources for that information. A lot of it was um, different links to Twitter, uh, to Twitter and just different um, forums, but no actual uh, information on it. Uh, the backstory is uh, there was a OSINT uh, group that posed a honeypot of females on tinder uh in the area that russian russian soldiers are in uh those russian soldiers talk to uh those honeypots whether they be male or female on the back side of that because you have the uh, digital mask in front of you from there uh, those soldiers were giving out information where they were photos of them and their gear um most likely photos of their vehicles as well um giving all that just freely to those investigators um you'll see that also with uh i don't have a link to it uh, but also on the january 6 deal um i believe the fbi also used uh tinder matches um and posted something about hey if you've matched with this person in this area Go ahead and let us know who they are and uh, what their name was on Tinder. Um, if I can find that article, I'll link it, but I had, that'll do a little bit of searching. Uh, you should just be able to do uh, FBI Tinder Jan 6, and that should pop something up. So let's go to historical and, and talk about uh, the Alpha Bay and Hansa for a second. Um, so what you see on the screen is just a cropped photo of two different screenshots from the two uh, tour websites. Uh, T is the onion. T O R is the onion relay. Um, it is how you access the scary uh, dark web, um, deep web, uh, anything that sounds scary. And just put that in front of the word web, and that's what you can use to describe tour in reality it's just an anonymous website or an anonymous browsing service um with relays and, and a bunch of different technical stuff all over the world um 
it's not only used in bad ways, such as with the Alpha Bay Enhancer, but it's also used in good ways. Uh, so in areas where there's uh, high censor censorship, such as Russia and China, um, people can use uh, Tor to access different uh, websites and such. Um, backstory on both of these now. Both the Alpha Bay and Hansa were uh, drug websites or illicit websites, I'll call them, uh, because they offered more than drugs. But they gave the browser, uh, I'll say the person behind the computer, uh, the ability to, quote, anonymously buy uh, drugs and other illicit services. Um, both of these were actually taken down at the same time. Um, it was a joint operation between, I believe it was the FBI and the Dutch version, um, of the FBI, where both sites were actually taken down simultaneously. Uh, it was a very big operation. Uh, in the end, I have a link to the Darknet Diaries episode on this, um, and I believe it was episode 24, uh, that's just guessing. Um, but he goes into great detail talking about this, and it was a very, um, captivating, uh, podcast. Where does a honeypot fit into this, though? Well, both sites were shut down. However, I believe it was the Alpha Bay actually stayed up for another month. Um, the FBI ran the website, and for that entire month... They gathered information on uh, users, uh, prospective dealers, and suppliers, all trying to still use that website. For some reason, not having the forethought and foresight to think it might have been taken over by the government agency that took down the other site, or the, the sister website. Fast forward about a month later, and then the FBI revealed, hey, no, this site's actually shut down, um, and we have all this information that we've been gathering over the last month. Uh, what happened with that? Nobody really knows. I believe in the podcast episode for the Darknet Diaries, um, one of the people either interviewed, um, talked about how they were using that site uh, and then kind of waited to, to be talked to and nothing had ever happened. Um, similar things go on where at some point they're going to go after just the big fish and not necessarily the little guppies. So how do you protect yourself from honeypots? Uh, well, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, if you're talking to a female or a male and things just seem way too good to be true um you know maybe you look like a underground troll from uh lord of the rings and some ukrainian supermodel is trying to talk to you and ask you to go on a date is it possible yes uh my wife isn't ukrainian but she is pretty much a supermodel and i'm pretty much a troll uh so it can happen it can work however Again, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Um, in terms of the physical data, or the, the physical data in terms of like a server, um, if you're doing red team things and this is supposed to be a high, you know, high value target and that server is just extremely weak, there's maybe you know, an admin, admin password, or it's just completely open, is it possible that somebody messed up? Yeah, completely possible. Uh, is it possible that's a honeypot? I would go more likely than not. Somebody's behind there hoping to get some red team traffic. Uh, then going with that historical aspect of the protection, you know, let's say you meet that Ukrainian supermodel and you let her into your home. Go around with a bug sweeper afterwards and make sure nothing was left behind. Make sure nothing was taken. Um, and if you have company over or people are going to come to your place of residence, uh, whether that be to do work or whatnot, uh, make sure your important documents are put away. Make sure your keys are put away. Um, don't give somebody the ability to just take 
information from you that you are just leaving out for them. And finally, for the protection aspect, uh, don't buy drugs online. Uh, I, I don't, I, I don't understand it. Uh, I don't think I ever will understand it. Um, but it worked for a little bit for some people, and in the end, it just didn't work out at all. Uh, there's the links. I was right. It is the Darknet Diaries episode 24. Uh, if you go to his website and you go to this this link, uh, which I'll have linked down into the YouTube comments or YouTube description, um, the transcript is there, and then there's a bunch of other different articles there uh, about it. Um, if you're interested in that type of stuff, go check that out. Uh, a bunch of different information and resources there. Uh, there's my Instagram. There's the website. Um, let me know how you liked this. I'm trying to keep these videos to 15 to 20 minutes. That seems to be where the uh, key uh, watching point is. Please let me know what you thought of this. Uh, please leave a like, comment, share it. If you share it, please tag me in your sharing. Um, I'll make sure to do the same back. Um, you guys doing all that lets me know that this stuff is actually useful. Uh, it's interesting uh, and then the comments about making this better for you is extremely helpful for me so i thank you guys for all watching this um stay tuned because there will probably be a tooltip tuesday uh this coming week uh, more of an update on some things that i'm working on and then uh you'll get a little bit of an insight to to what's been going on behind the scenes all right so whatever time it is hope you have a great rest of the day or hopefully you have a good next day and i will see you next week because the road to hell is paved with good intentions